Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 20 incredible finds on Antiques Roadshow. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the bits and bobs from all over the UK and Ireland that astounded appraisers. Average people brought in these hidden treasures whose value or rarity were jaw-dropping. Number 20, Odd Jobs Hat. This, I think, is an amazingly iconic collection of objects. When Antiques Roadshow came to Wales, one guest brought in an impressive collection of James Bond memorabilia. What absolutely shocked the appraiser was the inclusion of a prop hat from Goldfinger. It was previously thought that there was only one copy of Odd Jobs' deadly hat. As it turned out, the guest's brother-in-law was a driver for Aston Martin on the set of Goldfinger. He had asked the studio for the prop hat as a souvenir, and they agreed. His brother-in-law didn't treat it very well, unfortunately, using it as a childhood plaything with his friends. As a young lad, um, everybody wanted to throw the odd job hat. And if you look at it, everybody did throw the hat. <laughs> they caused significant damage to the hat, reducing its value by thousands of pounds. Still, a potential payday of 20 to 30,000 pounds is nothing to sneeze at. Glad I didn't lose it then. <laughs> Number 19, souvenirs made from Shakespeare's tree. And these two here, they're what is known as bardolatry. Hand-carved wooden bric-a-brac are staples of Antiques Roadshow, but they don't often have connections to major historical figures. On the shores of Lake Windermere, one guest brought in a collection that did just that. 200 years after the death of William Shakespeare, the reverend who owned his house was sick of bard-loving pilgrims. They've got Shakespeare's coat of arms here and his face, his portrait there. In particular, they would come to admire Shakespeare's mulberry tree. The reverend chopped the tree down and sold the wood to local artisans. One, a man called George Cooper, carved the guests' pair of cups, wooden box, and an intricately designed miniature wooden shoe. Appraiser Ronnie was utterly gobsmacked by their condition and quality, valuing the collection at around £9,000. Anything connected with him, anything made from a tree in his garden, his mulberry tree, just so special, and collectors just go mad for the stuff. Number 18, the Imperial Chinese Robe. There are those moments in your life that you will always remember, and I will always remember standing here, but I'll certainly always remember the first time that I saw this spectacular robe. It takes a great deal to shock Antiques Roadshow appraiser Lee Young. He grew up in the antiques business and has over 35 years of experience. In series 44, one guest left Young in shock. An elderly couple brought in a robe dating back to 1750s era Imperial China. Her grandfather brought it home to Britain after spending years as a bank manager in India. If I just pull that back, you've just got this wonderful, rich red brocade inside there. I mean, it's just. It's just a fabulous thing. And the, I just keep coming back to the condition. It is extraordinary. Despite some wear and tear and some slight oxidation of the copper threading, the robe was in otherwise immaculate condition. Young likened it to a museum-quality piece and claimed it to be the most expensive Chinese item he has ever seen on the show. He estimated its worth at a whopping £200,000. I think that would make £200,000. Number 17, medals for the Easter Rising of 1916. The Easter Rising of 1916 was an armed uprising where Irish Republicans rebelled against British rule in Dublin. Who did they belong to? They belonged to my grandmother's aunt and uncle. There were three siblings. It was a bloody battle that ultimately inspired the Irish War of Independence a few years later. One guest honoured that history and his family's participation when the roadshow came to Ulster. Passed down in his family for decades, his grandmother's aunt and uncle earned the medals in combat. Mark Smith was in awe of the collection. It is highly unusual to find medals of this kind, let alone those earned by women. The guest was only hoping to highlight his ancestors' history. 
He left Antiques Roadshow with the knowledge that his medals are worth around £20,000. They would be worth £20,000. Cheers. <laughs> Number 16, a Napoleonic column. A bronze column with the figure of Napoleon on top. I thought it was going to be for the mantle, <laughs> but this is... It's more monumental than many. <laughs> the Vendôme Column, found in the famed Palace Vendôme in Paris, was erected in 1810 at the request of Emperor Napoleon. He desired a French monument to emulate Trajan's column, similarly wishing to commemorate his victories in battle. The bronze bas reliefs from the statue were cast from captured artillery. And the beauty of the original, and also the beauty of this, is the detail is staggering. Two British sisters brought in a tremendous replica that had been in their family for over a century. The detail on the bronze replica is truly stunning, as is its sheer size. John Foster found it somewhat tricky to value, but he estimated it's worth clocking in between 20 and 30,000 pounds. But I would say easily at auction, comfortably, 20 to 30,000. <laughs> <laughs> Number 15, Florence Nightingale's toolkit. And it's not a professional one. I'd have said it's a sort of good amateur toolkit. In 2021, a woman brought in an amateur medical toolkit inherited by her grandfather decades earlier. The kit contained a series of metal tools and chisels that fit into a custom handle, all wrapped in leather. They belonged to her grandfather's great-aunt, Florence Nightingale. Florence defied the social conventions of the age, convincing her family to allow her to become educated. You tighten up this lovely nut, and there you have your gouge, ready to attack. She used that knowledge to forge a career and legacy in nursing, taking this toolkit to the Crimean War in the mid-19th century. Though the family law and the dating of the tools fits the history, the guest didn't bring proof of provenance. Were they to find documentation and proof, the kit could be worth anywhere between five and seven thousand pounds. It would be a major find if you can find that bit of paper. <laughs> Number 14, Dolly the Sheep Collection. The box of glass tubes of some sort. Tell me what links all of these things together. Well, without those, Dolly the sheep would never have existed. Antiques Roadshow tends to lean towards the historic and artistic more than the scientific. But one Series 45 guest shook things up with his personal collection of scientific memorabilia. The man was a biologist who worked directly on the experiments that led to the first cloned animal, Dolly the sheep. He unveiled a shorn fleece from Dolly as well as a number of scientific tools. These are museum pieces. At the forefront of science, the guest and his colleagues had to cobble together some of their equipment from scratch. Using Darwin's notebook and Fleming's Petri dish as a guide, he estimated their tentative value at 20 to 30,000 pounds. It's been gathering dust and I'm wondering what to do with it. Number 13, Charlotte Bronte's morning ring. So I got my, my, my sight's not very good, so I have to mm -hmm. get a, a lens. Of course a lens. Of, and it's like, see, Bronte. Antiques Roadshow is a magnificent window into the kind of treasures that can be uncovered in one's attic. One woman, after her father-in-law passed, discovered an old locked box. She searched the house, trying key after key until, voila, the box opened to reveal the mourning ring of Charlotte Bronte. The ring has a tiny hinged compartment containing a minuscule braid woven from Charlotte Bronte's own hair. Amazingly, we see this hair work within, um, very finely worked and plaited, mm -hmm. and it echoes a bracelet. Appraiser Jeffrey Munn was positively giddy at the find. Normally, a ring of this type would possibly only fetch around £25 or so. Given its direct and literal connection to the acclaimed novelist, Munn estimated its value at around £20,000. And, um, and the excitement is escalating um, for, for me and for you and for everybody else because I think this tiny, tiny little thing is worth £20,000. <laughs> Number 12, John Lennon's guitar. You brought me in an exceptionally rare guitar with an even more interesting story behind it. 
jazz and rock and roll revolutionized music forever. Innovations in art and technology led to the invention of an instrument that is the cornerstone of modern music, the electric guitar. In series 41 of Antiques Roadshow, two gentlemen brought a piece of that history back home to Britain. Ray, a musician himself, was handed the prototype guitar by George Harrison himself. <laughs> The piece drew a huge crowd who were all left breathless when its valuation was estimated at three to four hundred thousand pounds. A year later, Roadshow did a follow-up episode when the piece was actually sold. A private collector, after all fees were calculated, bought the guitar for a tremendous two hundred and forty thousand pounds. I wouldn't be surprised if it made between three and four hundred thousand pounds. <laughs> Number 11. Document signed by Queen Elizabeth I. We have a lovely, exquisite little document here on vellum, signed by Elizabeth I herself. Antiques Roadshow shines a light on the odd ways that historical objects come to be owned by regular people when they ought to be in a museum. There are perhaps no better examples than a rare document brought to the Roadshow in 2018. This document had been in the owner's family for several generations, but it was originally written in 1563. The contract was in pristine condition. It starts, Elizabeth, uh, signed Elizabeth R, of course, at the top. By the grace of God, Queen of England, France and Ireland, etc, etc. A royal license granting permission to an adventurer to go forth and discover sources of gunpowder. It was signed and sealed by Queen Elizabeth I. And here is the seal. You can see the, the uh, fleur-de-lis there of France and the lions of England. Book expert Clive Ferraha was astounded by its age and quality. He valued the find at £35,000, which left the guests speechless. Number 10. Painting by William Orpen Paintings quite often appear on this popular long-running antiques program, but rarely do they create as much of a stir as this one. Who would have got into trouble over calling a picture a spy in 1918? Because that subject was very, very sensitive. A painting by Sir William Orpen, a prolific wartime artist, was originally assumed by the guest to be a copy of a vision at the Imperial War Museum in London. This is something better. So I'm, I'm all excited now. However, it turned out to be a copy by the painter himself, leading to a very impressed antiques expert and one very, very satisfied guest. Twenty to thirty thousand pounds. Goodness, goodness gracious me, is about the <laughs> mildest thing I could say. Initially priced at thirty thousand pounds, expert Rupert Mars later revalued it at a whopping quarter of a million pounds. I've got to revise your valuation. Uh, it's worth at least a quarter of a million pounds. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Number 9. Richard Dad Painting Richard Dad is a famous Victorian painter known for creating supernatural pictures, many of which he completed from Bethlehem and Broadmoor psychiatric hospitals. So it was a huge surprise to see an original of his appear on the show. I would hope that some indications, I mean, it would be too much to hope, really, that this was a lost painting by Richard Dyer. Causing a ripple of excitement, it turned out to be a lost painting of his called The Desert, which had been sitting in the attic of a local couple's home for years. It is an international treasure, a lost picture, and I feel that it could possibly um, make somewhat over £100,000. <laughs> it was valued at a fantastic £100,000, smashing the show's records at the time, and was later sold to the British Museum for that very price. Number 8. Hoax Fairy Photographs Cousins Elsie Wright and Francis Griffiths created a nationwide hoax in 1917 by releasing a series of photographs of fairies they claimed to live at the bottom of their garden. The extraordinary visions of how we believed in fairies at a certain time. But how do you have these?
This even caused Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, writer of Sherlock Holmes, to send them a new camera to capture even more images of them. Your mother was what? Francis, Francis Griffiths. Griffiths. Yes. And it came back to the public eye in this 2008 episode when the daughter and granddaughter of the historical pranksters brought the photos and camera in question to the Antiques Roadshow. Add that story, this is all going to be 25 £30,000. An amazed expert valued them at around £25,000. Do I believe in fairies? <laughs> Perhaps I do. <laughs> Number 7. Captain Scott's Polar Autographs In Cardiff, a member of the public brought in what appeared to be a run-of-the-mill autograph book containing illustrations and a series of autographs. It is the crew of Captain Scott's ship, the Terra Nova, on his way to the Antarctic. However, these weren't just any old scribbles. They were taken from Captain Scott and his crew from their ill-fated polar voyage that ran from 1910 to 1913. But this is amazing. So how did you get it? Uh, well, it belongs to my wife. It passed down through her family. Featuring the names of all those involved on the Terra Nova expedition, it was given a valuation of up to £3,000. And given its context and the fact it was on the show exactly 100 years from the day they were taken, it's certainly one of the most incredible finds. Well, I think that this is worth somewhere in the region of two and a half to £3,000. Really? How about that? <laughs> Very good. Very good. Thank it you. won't leave us, of course. Of course not. <laughs> Number 6. Van Dyck Painting Anthony Van Dyck, the historically renowned Flemish Baroque artist, was well known in the early 17th century and beyond for being one of the best court painters of his era. Fast forward centuries later and one of his works is making an appearance on British Tea Time Television. Um, I bought it originally in Nantwich. In, in what? In an, uh, in an antique shop there, and um, knew and nothing about you, it. I spent for 400 it? for it. Purchased for £400 from a Cheshire antique shop by Father Jamie McLeod, it was unbeknown to the buyer at the time that it was a bona fide masterpiece. Are you prepared to commission a process of cleaning and restoration? However, expert Philip Mould valued it at a staggering £400,000. I'm delighted to be able to tell you <laughs> that you do have a work by Sir Anthony Van Dyke. The guest planned to use the cash to install some new church bells. Number 5. Banksy's Mobile Lovers After all, this is the Antiques Roadshow, and this was done on April the 12th this year. Now for some street art turned police property turned youth club saviour. It was on an old piece of wood, this piece of wood, yeah. which was um, in an old doorway just outside of my club. The ever-elusive Bristol street artist created Mobile Lovers on a door opposite a Bristol boys club, prompting the owner of the said establishment to remove it, take it inside and allow the public to come and see it. This was different and but unique in the fact that um, it's got its own letter um, of reference from Banks himself to me. After eventually being taken away by the police and given to Bristol Council, Banksy wrote to the club to say it was their artwork, which was then brought onto the roadshow and given an eye-watering price tag of £400,000. The owner eventually sold it and used the money to help his and other local youth centres. If you have had an offer, of something like £400,000, my instinct would be, better safe than sorry, take it. Number 4. Crawley Silver Back in the early 90s, this heartwarming episode gave us one of the show's most incredible finds. Gilded inside, and of course, these are very collectible. Young Richard Hobbs, a man whose family had very little money and who certainly differs from its usual guests, brought in a bag of what he assumed to be worthless pieces of silver. I would suggest you think in terms of about £10,000. Stashed in shoeboxes under his dad's bed, he took in his father's secret bounty only to discover that it was highly valuable Crawley silver, including stirrup cups and an early wine taster. 1607 in this case, so that's King James I. Now that is exceptionally rare. Later sold for £350,000 after a phenomenal valuation, Richard is forever etched into Antiques Roadshow history. That family had been struggling and suddenly, by selling a few of the items in that collection, which they, they subsequently did, uh, their lives literally changed. Number 3. The FA Cup Trophy 
arguably English football's biggest tournament, the FA Cup is known for some of the beautiful game's most exciting matches and the unpredictability of some of the country's biggest teams playing against some of its smallest. But up it goes. Arsenal extend this record. The FA Cup has been very good to them. Back in 2015, the actual trophy itself made a cameo in Harrogate, North Yorkshire, when it was brought in by BBC Sports' Gabby Logan and former Leeds United manager Eddie Gray. Leaving Alistair Dickinson flabbergasted, it scored a price of over £1 million, breaking the show's records at the time of filming Back of the Net. Gerard! Number 2. Fabergé Flowers This well-known Russian company, famed for their ornate imperial Easter eggs, have been creating stunning jewellery since the mid-19th century. I find Fabergé things on the Antiques Roadshow, but nothing of this scale. So when this very rare piece was brought onto the roadshow by an Army Reserve Cavalry Squadron, it caused waves of excitement. It's a solid block of what is apparently glass, but it's certainly not. It's stone. It's rock crystal. Featuring gold, diamond and jade petals, it was gifted to the squadron in 1904 by the Countess of Dudley and had since been sitting with them. The flowers are made of enameled silver and tiny silver stamens, but in the centre there's a dewdrop of diamond glinting in, in the sunshine. The show's expert, Geoffrey Munn, slapped an absolutely humongous price tag of £1 million on it. Not bad for something treated as part of the furniture by its owners. In my opinion, that this is worth a million pounds. Really? Wow. Goodness <laughs> gracious. Wow. Number one, Angel of the North model. One of the UK's most iconic landmarks, the Angel of the North was designed by Anthony Gormley and unveiled on the outskirts of Gateshead in 1998. And it was a scaled-down maquette of the 66-foot-high sculpture that made it on air, much to the joy of art expert Philip Mould. And indeed it was angel, an angel or a group of angels, who heralded the birth of Christ using something that has a deep resonance in our culture. The model in question was the basis on which the final structure was approved, meaning it is a genuine true likeness. It was given a truly staggering million pound valuation, going down in history as one of the show's most incredible finds. On the basis that this is half the size, I would comfortably value it at a million pounds. Amazing. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.